welcome back. This is a home-built position servo. It's a classical uh, position remote control uh, position controller for a DC motor. The DC motor is this uh, Chinese one, the MY1016, uh, which is um, not very expensive, made in China. You use it for bicycles and so on. It's not ideal for this application because there's no gearbox on it for starters, but nevertheless it serves a purpose. It's connected to a flywheel which we made here at AUT and there's an encoder, a quad encoder, which has got 1024 pulses per revolution. Here's the encoder here, another one, the uh, UMO1 CWZ3E and uh, it runs off 12, anything up to 12 volts. It's got two outputs, out A and out B and I connect that to my my reel. Now there are two types of controllers for motors. One is um, for DC motors. One is speed control where it just runs around and you control the speed. The other one is a position control where I control the angle like this. I want to make it turn around 45 degrees, minus 45. In traditional servos they could only turn around a limited range because they use potentiometers in the analog world to measure the uh, position and they had a limited range. Um, here you can it goes right round uh, several revolutions because uh, there is no start and no finish with these uh, encoders, these digital encoders. I've got a scope over here which is showing the pulse width modulation which I'm generating and the power supply is set to 12 volts even though this is a 24 volt motor. The controller here is a good controller, it's a one that I got um, over the internet, it runs up to 50 amps believe it or not, it's very cheap, uh, $30 US from AliExpress, and DBH01B says the smart car uh, driver, and uh, the H bridge uh, amplifies the pulse with modulation uh, coming out of the uh, my reel. Here's the motor which you can also get from AliExpress. It's the MY1016 24 volt motor. There's no gearbox in that one so as a servo it's not fantastic. You should really have one with a gearbox. You know here's the cord itself. Uh, first of all here's the Project Explorer which we must have in such problems and we've got the uh, target which is the servo and the servo host and the servo host runs on the processor on the MyReal so the servo uh, target is the FPGA code and here it is and I've done this in other videos but this just generates PWM. Because it's a FPGA we can run several loops in parallel totally concurrently and there's no problem with uh, Pratt timing or anything. It's the beauty of FPGAs. Uh, except for of course they're a pain to program apart from in LabVIEW here. So this generates, this is the timing for the loop, that's the frequency of the loop which I've made 10 kilohertz. Uh, when I say the loop I mean the, the, this particular loop, I don't mean the control loop. Uh, the loop in the FPGA which is generating 10, in this case 10 kilohertz period, uh, 10 kilohertz uh, the frequency PWM and the width is determined by this timer here in the middle so uh, setting this logic level 1 uh, delay and then logic level 0 and that gives us PWM, it's very very simple and that controls the width of the pulse in the middle. I've got another video for shows you how to do PWM but that's really all there is to it. Why use 10 kilohertz? Well, if you use a low frequency, uh, I might illustrate that at some point. It's quite noisy and uh, audible noise you get off the, the um, motor because it's within the audio frequency range. 10 kilohertz is just about uh, getting near the limit of most people's uh, frequency, uh, hearing range so it can't hear it. And uh, the other reason is there's less ripple peak to peak for the current. The current waveform in the motor 
uh, is the uh, integration of that which becomes a triangular wave and uh, there's less ripple when you run at a higher frequency and that's a good thing as well. Uh, the only disadvantage is if you run this at a very high frequency, try to run it let's say at, I don't know, 200 kilohertz or something like that, then you run into other problems with the H bridge that the MOSFETs switch too fast perhaps in the overheat, maybe, uh, but it's not a great concern at this frequency. This uh, is for forward and reverse. There are a few controls on the H bridge which you have to set up. That it's in particular in one and in two, and one has to be high when the other one's low. So that switch does forward and reverse. It's very simple. It has to be in a loop, otherwise it just executes once. It's one of the things about LabVIEW. You can't leave that loop out. This I've covered before in a previous video that reads the quad detector inputs. Um, D1 and D2 and uh, in this one it's connector A and I've covered that before this is a National Instruments uh, program as well this one it measures the angle of the shaft you notice there's a reset that tells it where to, where to begin because there is no beginning and end it's just around a loop um, a circuit in, in 360 degrees and that's a timer really um, that's sampling at 1 megahertz and this is another one sampling at 1 megahertz for the set point we've got an identical one acting as the set point for our controller so I'll run this because it's been compiled there it goes I go to the main program the main program that just switches on the host reads the FPGA here it's the target it's running on a 1 megahertz clock on a real-time loop it's a real-time operating system remember that's 2 two kilohertz it's running at it's a little bit complicated to explain all the details here but I needed a controller for it, a PID controller and I ended up doing it myself in software um, and there's the proportional control derivative and integral control if you when you when you put a differential action in a pure differentiator, then you um, have the previous value minus the current value, and uh, you scale that uh, by the a factor in this case d. But when you do that, that gives you a slope of 20 dB per decade, and that amplifies any high frequency signals. So you put a filter in to roll off the uh, differential term, that's good practice. Uh, if you didn't do that, you can get away with some low bandwidth systems, but it's, it, um, it can give rise to oscillations at high frequency and all sorts of noise problems. The integrator's straightforward. The new value equals the old value plus uh, scaling factor, which is the integral action. Here, here are the PID settings, which I've tuned before. I'll uh, switch this on now. Oh, and that's it. Now go back to the setup. And here's my set point. And you'll notice as I turn it, the angle of the shaft turns beautifully in response to it. It's quite well damped. I can go right round past. 360 degrees, many turns. That's quite a powerful servo, in fact. It takes uh, about a nap only. I haven't loaded it, of course. Take a lot more if it's loaded. Apart from the wide five wheel, there's the um, quad detector, my real controller, set point, an identical core detector. I can also control it from the front panel. Let's zero it. Oops. And uh, there I'm controlling it by software. It's a little bit noisy there for some reason. We'll go back here. It's more noisy than the uh, 
quad detector. Now just to show that it really is a control system, let's reduce the derivative action very low and that means the stability should suffer. Let's go back. Now here's my set point. Oh, I have to put it back onto manual. Oh, that's pretty convincing, I think. Look this one, it's oscillating. The current shoots up to about 5 to 10 amps, so you've got to be careful here. Otherwise, you blow up your H bridge. But it is pretty robust. So there we have it, my Wii U FPGA home built servo uh, with an H bridge, set point, it can be software or another quad detector. Thank you.